So in this video we're going to look at menus and toolbars in Java Swing. So if we look in Eclipse we've got some menus at the top, file, edit, navigate, search, etc, etc. When we click on the menu we get a pull down menu and we can select from these menu items to perform various functions. Just under this we've got a toolbar which are buttons that we can press. Um, the buttons do similar functions to what the menus do and both of these menus and toolbars are quite intuitive because they've been a staple part of UI design for a long time. So a menu bar in Java Swing is just a J menu bar object. So let's create one here. Control Shift and O to import it. We add the menu bar to the frame by using the set J menu bar method in frame. And the menu bar has a series of J menus. So I'm going to make a couple of J menus. Let's make a file menu and a help menu. I'm going to add both of these menus to the menu bar. Now when we run, we should see that we have a file and a help menu at the top. So it's very simple. Then we can add items to these menus. And items are J menu items. So I'm going to add two items to the file menu and two items to the help menu. So I construct them and then just add them to the menu that we want. Now when we run, we can see we have file with menu item one and two and help with help menu item one and two. So it really is that simple. We just create a menu. We add it to the frame with the set J menu bar method. Then we create menus and then we create the menu items. We can also add other menus to menus and have sub menus. I'll just demonstrate that now. So I've added a menu to the help menu, the help sub menu, and I'm adding help sub menu item one and two to the help sub menu. So now when we run, we can see we have a sub menu off the help menu. So that's uh, very simple how we can add menus and we just simply set the menu bar in the frame and add menus and items to it. There's a few other things we can do. We can also add separators. So for example, if I want a separator between some of these items, maybe I'll add it below help menu item two and before the sub menu. So I can just say help menu here after we've added the menu items, but before the sub menu, add separator. And 
and there we can see a separator a line across separating the menus so it's typical in um, menus to have certain items grouped together so for example we can see the welcome here is then has a separator and then we have these three and then another separator so that's uh, how we can add separators to our menu the menu items fire action events just like buttons and this is a good time to use the action command so for each of my menus i'm going to give them an action command i'm going to create an action listener i'm going to set the action listener to listen to the whole menu and then i'll do something in the text box i'll say which menu item we've selected in the text box so for each menu item i'm going to add an action command So I've set an action command for each menu item, which is just a string. And now I'm going to add an action listener. I'm going to create a new action listener. So I'm going to create a new action listener called menu listener. It's a new class and it implements action listener. I'll give it the action perform method and I'm going to create one of these and then I'm going to add it as an action listener for each of our menu items So I've added the menu listener for each of the menu items and each has got an action command. And then in the menu listener, I'm just gonna set the text area text to be which the action command that was selected. You could imagine we could do a switch on the action command to see which menu has fired. So now when we run, when we select from the menu, we see file menu item one, which is the action command that I assign to menu item one, file menu item two, help menu item one. So whichever one we select, we get the action command for it appearing. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is mnemonics. Now, when we select from a menu, sometimes we want to, for example, in Eclipse, if I want to select from the Help menu, I could press Alt-H. When I hold down Alt, I can see that the first letter of each of these is underlined. If I press H, I can then see we've got other things underlined that we might frequently want to pick. So we can use mnemonics for this. So in my little application, I'm going to add the mnemonic H for help and one for help submenu item one. We'll see how that works. So for the help menu, I'm going to set mnemonic H. and help menu item one I'm going to set the mnemonic of one now when we run we can select from the menu by pressing alt H and one we can see we've selected help menu item one the other thing we can do is accelerators so for help menu item two i'm going to set an accelerator for 
for this we do a key keystroke so we do keystroke dot get keystroke and then whatever character we want so we can do for example key event dot bk underscore two because it's menu item two and then we could do a mask as well so for example control mask then let's see what that's done so in menu item two we can see that control two is the keyboard accelerator and now if we do control two we've selected directly the menu item two uh, i've accidentally set the wrong um, set 12 in there but we can see that we've selected directly from that menu by just pressing control two so that's how we do accelerators it's a quick way to just quickly select from a menu Another thing we can do with menu items is we can make them checkbox menu items. So for example, file menu item one, I'm gonna change this to a J checkbox menu item. We just change its type. And now when we look at it, we have a checkbox so we can tick an item on and off. And another thing we can do, we can set an icon. So for example, in file menu item two, I'm going to say set icon. And create a new image icon. And I'm just going to get an image for that. So I'm going to paint. I'll just draw some image, just a smiley face. Now we can see menu item two has got the smiley face. Obviously I could take more care to make it an appropriate size, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now I'm just gonna tidy up the code so that to make it more straightforward, I'm gonna add a add menu item uh, method, which takes in the parameters because there's a lot of repeat code in here. So let's just do this. So I've added this method add menu item, which will create the menu item, set the action command to the action command specified in the parameter, and then it will add the mnemonic, the accelerator and the icon if they're not null. It will add it to the parent menu that we give it, and then it will add the action listener to it. So that should cut the code down a bit when I go back up to the top. So I'll just separate the code here. So that wasn't really specific to menus. It was just an example of how when we're using a lot of the same code again and again, how we can cut it down quite a bit. So there we're using the add menu item method and that's cut the code down quite a lot. When we run, we can see everything's still just the same as it was before. So that's how we do J menus, very simple. We add the J menu bar to the frame. We then add J menus to it and we can add J me menus to that if we want sub menus. And then finally we add menu items. We can give them action commands and we add an action listener to listen for when the menus are selected. 
Now we're going to add a toolbar to our simple application. Toolbars are very easy to add. We just use a J toolbar. We set the frame into border layout and we add it into page start using the border layout. Now this uh, application we built here has a main panel uh, and that panel has panel caption. Now I'm going to set the frame into border layout and I'm going to add the main panel into border layout center. Then I'll add a new toolbar into page start of the border layout. So let's do that. So I'm setting the main panel into border layout, the frames panel, and I'm adding main panel in border layout center. And then I'm going to say J toolbar. new J toolbar and then add toolbar and border layout page start. Now we can just add some normal J buttons to the toolbar. So I just add one button for now and we run it. We see we have a toolbar with a button. We can add more buttons along there and we can also um, add buttons with images or we can add checkboxes or any other component we want really. So I'm just gonna change this button to use the icon that I added when I was using the menu bars. Uh, so let's do that just so that it's a graphical button. And there we see we have our smiley face image on our button. Now the thing about toolbars is they're also dockable in their default form. So we can grab this uh, area to the left of the toolbar and remove it from the frame. And we can also dock it to the different sides of the frame. And if we close it, it will automatically dock back to where it was before. Now the toolbar buttons are just normal buttons, so we can add action commands to them, add action listeners to them, and listen for when they're pressed or selected. So that's how to do toolbars. So now we have our application with the menu bar and some toolbars. So now we can respond to users selecting things from the menus or the tools. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.